Hi, this is Ollie from Undo here to talk about how we get your test farms green and what exactly the value of that is to you and your organization. Um, so before we kick off, just Undo, we are a software reliability or obsessed company um, looking at, you know, with not just our technology, but with the entire variety of technology around continuous integration and continuous development, how we can help our customers get to a fully green test farm. And I think the way um, we think about this and the way um, I encourage you to think about this is to look at all of the costs to you of even with a well-implemented CI, CD pipeline of having failing tests in your test farm. And, you know, the obvious uh, loop, shall we say, here, the agile loop, you are, you know, writing your code, you are verifying and testing it, and you're iterating on that before you really go into some sort of pre-production release. Um, but as any one of us will tell us, and in fact, every single one of our customers will tell us, they know that when they get to this release status, there are unresolved issues in their, this agile loop. Um, there are unresolved issues reported from customers in their pre-production environment, and they are shipping with known defects. And so obviously that is a huge customer satisfaction issue. That's obviously one of the uh, key things, you know, you do end up shipping bugs, but actually the, uh, the effects of having these bugs in the first place is more insidious. Um, you know, inside this agile loop, you'll find obviously that your developers spend some of their time creating, but the vast majority of their time verifying and bug fixing. And that means, you know, that time is spent rather than writing new features or increasing the functionality of your product. Uh, that time is spent debugging and playing whack-a-mole with a plethora of issues in your test environment. Um, and so obviously, um, slowing down this kind of loop is obviously a kind of completely critical problem, um, which combined with the fact that the end result when we get to our release is unhappy customers um, is obviously pretty, uh, pretty terrible. Um, Cadence Design Systems have been a, a long-term undo customer using various of our technologies, um, and they approached us around a new release of their simulator. Um, and they realized that before they were going to release it, they had somewhere between um, 5,000 and 10,000 failing tests in a giant test farm of, of, of hundreds of thousands, possibly low numbers of millions of tests. Um, and they knew that there were something like 50 to 200 failures that were generating almost all of these issues. They knew that they couldn't easily reproduce them. They were sporadic failures. Um, but they knew that if they wanted to ship their products and really delight their customers, that they had to complete sort of completely resolve this issue. And not only that, but they realized that if they did that, they'd be able to spend significantly more time on new features uh, amongst their very demanding customers. Uh, for those of you that don't know Cadence particularly well, um, they sell into organizations like Apple, Samsung, um, Arm, the very, very largest semiconductor companies in the world, hugely demanding customers who have very high technical standards and technical feature requests that they obviously have to respond to. So working hand in hand with Undo, um, we were able to generate these recording files of the, I think it ended up being around 100 failing tests, um, make these perfect reproducers, and in very, very short order, having generated those files, uh, debug the issues with a view to resolving all 10,000 test failures um, that stemmed from these issues. So you know, truly getting their test farm to green, allowing them to ship with confidence, um, ship slightly quicker than they were expecting, um, and also ship with additional features. So, obviously, we've spoken a little bit about Undo's technology, software flight recording technology, um, but there are plenty of ways uh, of approaching going green, and I just wanted to take you through, uh, in ascending order, how, um, how we think about approaching going green and how we work with our customers. Um, the first is to say that, you know, as we spoke about at the very top of the webinar, agile methodologies are a critical component. Uh, having the feedback loop between testing and development, um, making regular updates, um, allows you to be hugely, hugely responsive um, to, to debugging issue, issues. Beyond that, though, I think, you know, right early in the development process and before you get into a full kind of QA pipeline, 
um, we see that the, one of the best practices amongst our customers is running significant but lightweight unit testing. The idea being that the very, very simplest issues and the very lowest hanging fruit in your test farm can be verified by developers before they even push the code. Um, the next thing on our list, and I think um, hugely important, is adoption of other tools, and that's really the sort of final sec, sort of final piece of the puzzle. Um, and I think there are three really important classes of tools that we see customers who are really obsessed with maintaining a green test farm adopting. Uh, the first is obviously static analysis, plenty of fantastic tools out there to help with this problem. And they're becoming increasingly sophisticated at allowing you to um, identify simple logic errors, um, places where you might have assigned memory incorrectly that is you know, visible uh, in the pure um, sort of uh, in, in the pure sort of vocabulary, so to speak, of your code. Um, the next would be obviously dynamic analysis during testing. And so um, I think I want to make a, a really important distinction here of, you know, testing in and of itself is a completely important stage and full integration testing beyond unit testing is, is critical. But to take it one step further, we see our very, very best customers and most successful customers using tools like Valgrind like uh, the sanitizer tools um, to provide an extra layer of feedback. And so, for example, every single time they run their full QA suite, they will also be running um, these dynamic tools against key tests with a view to detecting memory leaks or um, similar kinds of issues. And obviously, the final technology, um, which obviously we are very proud of here at Undo, is software flight recording technology. The idea that we can record an application um, and generate a file that is a perfect reproduction of that test failure um, is both an incredibly powerful tool when you have sporadic failures, but it's also an incredibly powerful tool when you're looking to enable every developer to debug an issue. It stops being a case of your developers with access to specific systems or specific skill sets being able to resolve problems, and it becomes an issue of have we been able to reproduce the uh, reproduce the failure in our, our test farm? And if so, can I get that recording to a developer? Hopefully very simply. Um, and are they able to debug it? And the answer in almost all cases is, is yes, they can. Uh, and this becomes the final piece of the puzzle for those issues that aren't caught by unit testing, static analysis, or dynamic analysis.